It is now time for member statements. The member from Essex. Madam Speaker, I have more great news from the riding of Essex. This government has now embarked on the biggest expansion of nurse practitioner clinics in the history of the province of Ontario. And part of that expansion is happening in the county of Essex, right in the town of Kingsville. In the town of Kingsville, they are creating an additional 1,200 spaces for people to be rostered with a nurse practitioner. And do you know what that means, Madam Speaker? That means an additional 1,200 people in the town of Kingsville and around the town of Kingsville will now have a dedicated primary care practitioner right in their own hometown. <laughs> Madam Speaker, it means people are going to access primary care when and where they need it. But wait, there's more. They're also attracting a builder who is not only going to add to that clinic, but build more medical services around the nurse practitioners. Madam Speaker, the people of Kingsville are very happy with their additional 1,200 spaces of primary care, and they're going to get their services where and when they need it. Thank you. As we celebrate International Women's Day and the historic protest by women garment workers, things are not looking good in the fight for economic equality. The gender wage gap is stark in Ontario's caring economy, the health care and social services vital to our province. Ontario wildly underpays women and gender diverse folks, newcomers, and racialized people who work in these sectors. A nurse is a nurse is a nurse. A PSW is a PSW is a PSW. ECs, I mean, I could go on and on. The NDP fights for more for these workers because they deserve fairness. Do CEOs pay for their own work-related travel? Or would you be okay with lawyers getting paid by the case and not the hours and days spent on it? Of course not. So why then are governments so miserly when it comes to the paying the caring professions? People's good hearts alone should not be what hold up these vital systems. I remember Bill 115 attacking education and the public sector, and now Bill 124, yet another expensive loser legal battle. What is wrong with Liberals and Conservatives that once they get into power, they want to keep money out of people's pockets? When members of this chamber celebrate the many accomplishments of the women's movement, they should ask why. Ask why their government continues to undervalue women's labour and starve people out of their preferred jobs. The official opposition stands for wage parity across healthcare sectors, nonprofits, developmental services, community support services, women's shelters, and mental health and addiction support. Investing in people strengthens families and builds communities. To the government, do you stand with workers? Show it with wage parity in budget 2024 and pay people what they're worth. Thank you. Thank you very much. Member Statements. The member for Burlington. Thank you, Speaker. Good morning. I rise this morning to recognize a business that is a cornerstone in my riding. Pollard Windows and Doors was founded in 1948 and recently celebrated 75 years in business. The Pollard formula for success has always been simple. Work hard, invest in new technology, and give customers more for their money. Today, Pollard is still 100% owned and operated family business, manufacturing windows and doors in a state-of-the-art 300,000 square foot plus plant in Burlington. Recognized as a leader in the window and door market, Pollard is known for developing innovative products that surpass even the most stringent building codes in Canada. Pollard's manufacturing plant is a top employer in Burlington, supporting our local economy and manufacturing Ontario-made products. They're known for their Energy Star ratings and for helping more Ontarians save on their energy bills. Pollard is committed to investing in the local economy and the development of skilled workers. Thank you to the role you, uh, for your role in making Ontario's economy stronger. Thank you very much. Member State. 
Member Statements. The member for Windsor West. Thank you, Speaker. Next Friday is International Women's Day, and I want to take a moment to recognize the contributions and leadership of women and girls who are making Ontario a better place to live, work, and play. And yet, this government under Doug Ford has taken every step it can to systematically undermine women's rights and economic stability. In their first term, they cut funding to the Ontario College of Midwives, a profession held largely by women. They clawed back raises for early childhood educators, leading to a staffing crisis across the sector. And they repealed the curriculum that adequately addresses consent. During the pandemic, this government left nurses and allied health staff all predominantly female professions feeling abandoned. When nurses needed this government the most, they were left with suppressed wages under Bill 124, short-staffed and unsafe working conditions. Then the Conservatives turned their sights on low-paid women education workers with Bill 28. This government is failing to support and protect women and girls from mounting wait times to access basic reproductive care, deep cuts to legal aid funding, changes to social assistance programs, rape crisis centres at risk of closing, women's shelters over capacity because of lack of transitional, affordable and supportive housing, and sexual assault cases being thrown out due to court backlogs. As we celebrate the accomplishments of women and girls who are fighting for and building a fairer and more inclusive Ontario, I call on this government to support women instead of tear them down, because women and girls in our communities deserve nothing less. Thank you very much. Member for Stormont, Dundas, South Glengarry. Good morning, Mr. Speaker. It's great to be back at Queen's Park, and I'm excited to share this great news with everyone. On February 15th, I was proud to stand alongside our local, local primary care teams to announce $4,074,398 in funding for the Seaway Valley Community Health Centre, Centre de Santé Communitaire de l'Estrie, Glengarry Nurse Practitioner Lead Clinic, Rideau St. Lawrence Ham, uh, Family Health Team. All four organizations are members of the Great River Ontario Health Team who came together to collectively address the primary care needs of our area. Instead of each organization going alone and submitting individual proposals, they collaborated for the benefit of the whole region. Mr. Speaker, this is excellent news for our community, my riding of Stormont, Dundas and South Glengarry. This will connect an estimated 19,340 people to a primary care doctor or nurse practitioner in Stormont, Dundas, and Glengarry. This will connect children, parents, grandparents, friends, and neighbours to care close to home. This $4 million investment is part of a larger investment of $110 million to connect over 300,000 Ontarians with a primary health team. Congratulations to these primary health teams, and thank you for all that you do. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Ottawa West Nepean. Thank you, Speaker. Ottawa residents are desperately feeling the lack of primary care options. The Ontario Medical Association calculates that Ottawa needs at least 171 more family doctors in order to meet just current demands. But we're also seeing family doctors closing up practice because the conditions have become unsustainable, Speaker. And unfortunately, 40 percent of family doctors say they are considering retiring in the next five years. My constituents are upset, and I get it, Speaker. It is incredibly frustrating, but also scary not to have a doctor or a nurse practitioner you can turn to when you're sick, have questions, or just need a prescription renewed. And what's even more concerning, Speaker, is that we're seeing this shortage in the context of funding cuts for emergency care at the Queensway Carleton Hospital. The Queensway Carleton's emergency department is one of the busiest in the whole province. Patients are routinely waiting hours to be seen, sometimes even just to be triaged. And yet, the government is cutting funding to the Queensway Carleton's ER. By April, Speaker, we will be down 10 physician hours every single day in the ER. So 150,000 Ottawa residents don't have a family doctor and have no option but to go to the ER, and now they're going to have to sit and wait even longer to see a doctor there. This is no way to run a health care system, Speaker. It's time for the government to take the crisis seriously and make the investments needed to make sure that every Ontario resident gets the primary health care and the emergency health care they need when they need it. Thank you. 
Member statements. The member for Brampton West. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The One Peer Initiative, which officially launched on Monday, February 26, is a pivotal change for all Ontarians, particularly in those in my riding of Brampton West. This announcement provides constituents in my riding a simpler pathway towards enhanced connectivity and provides a cheaper and convenient option for transit riders to commute to work, school, or for running errands. This transformative policy simplifies fare systems ensure seamless travel for residents within and beyond the city limits. Speaker, by eliminating the need for multiple payments across different transit networks, it eliminates financial barriers and enhances accessibility to essential services, educational opportunities, and employment centers for all Ontarians. Speaker, the One Fair Initiative aligns with the government of Ontario's commitment to affordability, incentivizing greater use of public transit, it promises to mitigate traffic congestion and put more money back into the pockets of Ontarians. This showcases our commitment to saving commuters both time and money. Whether individuals are heading to work, school, or social events, our government's significant investments in Ontario's public trans uh, transportation system is simplifying travel, making it more convenient, efficient, and affordable for everyone to reach their destinations. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Member statements. The member for Scarborough Guildwood. Mr. Speaker, it is an honor to get up in this house and speak on what Black History Month means to me. I expect that each single one of you had an opportunity to attend a Black History Month event to learn about our ancestors and our contributions to this country. The first black people in this country did not come here by choice. However, this country has become one of the most open, equitable, and free societies in the world. Therefore, I have immigrated to this country, like many other people of all races, religions, and cultures. My place among you would not have been possible without the blood, sweat, and tears shed by black members before me, Marion Chambers, Margaret Best, and Mitzi Hunter, my direct predecessors in my seat of Scarborough Guildwood. They have counseled me on the difficulties of being a black woman in this chamber. Most of all, I would like to pay tribute to Dr. Alvin Collin, former minister and speaker of this very chamber and longest serving black MPP. He's an inspiration to me and to so many community members, and he should be an inspiration to every single member in this house. But he's more than that. He has the most honorable attribute a person can have, for he's a good friend and mentor. With love to Dr. Alvin Collin on Black History Month, a celebration of excellence, a heritage to celebrate, and a future to build. Thank you very much. One second. We're still in member statements. The next member statement, the member for Peterborough Kawartha. Thank you, Speaker. For 10 years now, Trent University has had Dr. Leo Grork at its helm. He joined Trent in 2014 and was reappointed in 2019. During his time at Trent, he's had six consecutive balanced budgets and has revitalized recruitment, student success and retention, research and career services. But for me, I would say that the review of the college system and reinstatement of college affiliations will actually have the biggest impact on student life. This seemingly small aspect of Trent's unique experience brings both on-residents and off-resident students together to form a unique community within the greater Trent community, and it helps create connections with students of every academic discipline. Leo also helped Trent form a partnership with PeopleCare to build a 224-bed long-term care facility. This will provide some of the most needed care homes for our seniors, but it also creates a wonderful learning opportunity for Trent's nursing students, Trent's Center for Aging, as well as Sir Sanford Fleming College's nursing students, PSWs, and culinary students. Dr. Grork is truly a unique and special inter individual. Perhaps it's in his DNA, because Dr. Leo is actually a triplet. 
That, in of itself, makes him somewhat unique. However, to add to the exceptional uniqueness, both of his brothers also have PhDs and are also presidents of Canadian universities. <laughs> Leo, enjoy your retirement this June, and yes, we will get out kayaking this summer. Thank you. The next member statement, the member for Halliburton Court Lakes Brock. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Earlier this month, I had the opportunity to experience the rush of dog sledding alongside the Minister of Tourism, Culture and Sport at the Winter Dance Dog Sled Tours in Halliburton. The minister took the helm of the sled as I tested my filmmaking abilities, navigating the rugged wilderness and lakes of beautiful Halliburton Highlands, and shared the thrill of dog sledding. Our guide, Hank, is an accomplished athlete who has competed four Yukon quests and two Iditarods and continues to compete to this day. His wife, Tanya, is an equally accomplished speaker, author, and entrepreneur. She has even taken the stage as a keynote speaker to Fortune 100 companies, sharing her story of leadership, team building, overcoming challenges, and chasing dreams. I would like to thank the couple and their children, Logan, Justin, Michaela, and Jessica, and their team for their hospitality, hospitality and sharing their passion with us and their love for dogs. Any day spent outdoors with dogs is a good day, as the minister said, but it was made more magical thanks to the couple's love and commitment to the Huskies and adventure. I encourage anyone who has never gone dog sledding to embrace the spirit of adventure and embark on an unforgettable experience to head to winter dance in the Halliburton Highlands before the end of the season. And yes, the dogs were the true stars of this adventure. Their joy and eagerness for the trail was contagious, and in short, they were all positively amazing. <laughs> Thank you very much. That concludes our members' statements for this morning. Introduction of visitors. I'm very pleased to.